100% for giving exalting truth no matter the cost. My name is Gary Johnson and I hope that today's lesson can bless you and can encourage you and can build you up and will give you confidence in your walk with God. This lesson is specifically aimed towards Christians, um, children of God, people who belong to God. However, this applies to anybody. Um, I hope that all of us can take a moment as we listen to this to examine our lives because this is coming from God's Word um, and us as Christians, we love God and we want to do what God wants us to do. Our desires have changed and we want to live right. We want to be conformed into the image of His Son every day and we want to grow in Him. So, the topic that I want to touch on today is a very special topic and it's a topic that many of us, I believe, struggle with. It's an issue that we may have been bringing with us all throughout our lives. And that issue is forgiveness. Not the forgiveness of God, but rather forgiving others. I assume that there has been at least one point in your life where you have had a hard time of forgiving someone. Maybe someone in your life, maybe it's been your father. Say you haven't had a father figure in your life. Say your, your father has not been there for you to support you, to meet your emotional needs, to meet your physical needs, and to be there to love you as a father and to raise you and to protect you. Maybe it's been your mother. Maybe you do not have a mother in your life. You've never had a mother figure in your life. They've always been away from you. They haven't shown you the love and the compassion that they need to. And they haven't led you in the right way that you should go. Maybe it's been another family member. Maybe you've had conflict with your family. Maybe you've got gossip going on in your family. Maybe you have... Um, just different opinions about things that have caused a wedge in between your relationship with your family members. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's someone who used to be your friend. And you guys are no longer friends. You used to be really close. And now you have hurt feelings from one another. Maybe you guys said some things to each other that was not beneficial. And it's actually tore you guys apart. And each of you feel justified and what you've said, each of you feel justified in how you feel. You feel like the other is wrong. Um, or maybe it just happened with a co-worker at work. Maybe you're having a hard time forgiving someone at work. Maybe someone um, ripped you off on your pay stub. They didn't give you your, you know, your full amount that you're supposed to have. Maybe people are just talking behind your back. Maybe people are just trying to overload you with work. Maybe this happened... With a stranger, someone who cut you off in the middle of the road, someone who maybe flipped you off in the middle of the road. That happens. That's happened to me before. Um, and maybe you just can't stop thinking about this stuff. Maybe this stuff has been in the back of your mind that pops up every once in a while. Or maybe it's just eating you alive. Maybe you've had a past experience with the church. Um, people have been judgmental to you. People have hurt your feelings. And they have crushed you and it's hard for you to get through maybe you've had some sexual abuse in the past in your life that you kept to yourself that you know god knows and you're having a hard time forgiving the one who did this to you the one who people who have been verbally abusive to you and physically abusive one thing that is a fact is that it is hard to live here in this world it is hard but one thing we need to take comfort in, whether you're a child of God or not, God cares. He loves us. And He wants us to trust in Him and to be conformed into Him. And to, and to just follow His lead and to do what He wants us to do. Because when we do what He wants us to do, it's not out of a religious, legalistic obligation. I'm God. I want you to do what I want you to do because I'm God. No. The commandments... And stuff that God gives us to obey. It's for our benefit. Yes, it does glorify God. And we are obeying God. And it's important to obey God. And when I say God, I'm talking about Jehovah. That word, that term God is thrown around a lot. Many people believe in different gods. Um, I'm specifically talking about God. Um, Jesus Christ. Jeho Jehovah. Je Yeshua. Um, Holy Spirit. The Trinity. That's what I'm talking about. Um, but God cares. And the things that happen in this life, it's not because God is angry with you. It's not because he does not care. It's not because he's not paying attention. God does love you. And 
the things that happen in this world are not because he wants them to happen. It's not that he wants bad things to happen to you, but he he allows these things to happen. Now, this all starts back all the way to the to the beginning of the creation. So, all the way back, if you remember, if you read Genesis, life was perfect until Adam and Eve fell and they they sinned and it kind of ruined everything for us. So, all of us, when we were born, we were born in Adam and um, we're sinners. And it's through Jesus Christ that we become justified, sanctified, washed and made holy. So, when dealing with forgiveness, we need to remember that the the original plan of God was that we were made in His image. All of us are made in His image. However, we're not perfect like He is. Adam and Eve were made in the image of God. Um, all of us are. We, we're able to think. We, we have emotions like God does. We're able to feel and love like God does. But all of us, we need to realize all of us are made in the image of God. Genesis 1, 26-28 says this, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. They will rule the fish, of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock of all the earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. So, again, this all goes back to the very beginning. God made us to be in his image. God created us in his image. Everybody. Those who you work with, that you're mad at, those who you're having a hard time of forgiving. God created us in His image. Another thing that we need to realize is that day by day, as Christians, as children of God, God is at work in us as we are being conformed into the image of His Son. Romans eight twenty nine to 30 says, For those who He foreknew, He predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, so that He would be the firstborn among many brothers. And those who he predestined, he also called. Those who he called, he also justified. Those who he justified, he also glorified. So when dealing with forgiveness, we need to remember, as children of God, as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, day by day, God is at work in us. And we are being conformed, day by day, into the image of his Son. And I'll explain to you why I'm mentioning these verses in a minute. Um... God is at work in us. We need to remember that. When dealing with forgiveness, God is at work in us. So one thing that God wants us to grow in is learning how to forgive others. Forgiveness is such a crucial component and attribute of God. We see all throughout the Bible. In fact, forgiveness should be stamped on your Bible. Right under Holy Bible, it should say forgiven or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that's a stretch. But the whole message of God, the whole... God loves us, and He reached out to us to forgive us, to take our debt away, to take our sins away through the offering of Jesus' body and His blood that was shed for us. Now, granted, this is a hard thing to do. Forgiving somebody is a hard thing to do, especially when someone has wronged you for no reason. I tell you what, I'll read Scripture. I'll read where the Apostle Paul said, You know, when we're cursed, we bless. You know, when we're treated wrong, we treat them right. You know, it's so easy to get a spiritual high when you listen to this and you read this, but it's totally different when you're having a spiritual low. You know what Paul did in his spiritual lows. You want to do the same thing. Now, we have a habit I think, at least for me, I'll speak for myself. Sometimes I have a habit of exalting the apostles on a level they shouldn't be exalted. Yes, these were chosen people, specific chosen people from Jesus Christ. And yes, they represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, There's 12 apostles, 12 tribes of Israel. And they were given authority to cast out demons, you know, to heal all this. I mean, these were unlike any other normal human being besides Jesus. But they are still people. Matthew was a tax collector. Paul was a persecutor of the church. He was a terrorist. Um, these were people who lived in sin. And they uh, 
They were just ordinary people like us. But yet, by God's grace, God used them to change the world. But this is hard. Forgiving others is a hard thing to do. All of us have our own personal baggage, as I mentioned. We all have a past. We all come from different backgrounds. We all have our own issues. Things from the past, you may have things going on right now that are from the past. You can't let go of the past. That may be you. It's hard to get through that. Maybe you tried to forgive, and it's been hard for you to do. Even though forgiving one another is hard, as children of God, we need to know something. Forgiving others is a perfect way to present the Lord, to represent the Lord in a world where there is not much forgiveness. So let me say that again. As children of God, we need to know something. Forgiving others is a perfect way to represent the Lord in a world where there is not much forgiveness at all. If you remember, if you've read your Bible, Jesus calls his disciples the salt of the earth and lights of the world. Jesus said that the world would know his followers by their love for one another. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 5. Love keeps no record of wrongs. So, when approaching forgiving somebody, um, and we want to be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. That's what the Christian, that's one of the parts of being a Christian. We're, we are being conformed into the image of Christ. We are made right with God, and we are being conformed into His image, to the image of His Son. One of the ways that we do this is by embracing love. What is love? What is the definition? What is the biblical godly definition of love? Well, agape. However, it's expressed in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 5. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It is not boastful. It is not conceited. It does not act improperly. It's not selfish and it's not provoked. And love does not keep a record of wrongs. Man, that one stings a little bit, don't it? Because I think a lot of us, I personally have struggled with keeping a record of wrongs that have been done to me. It's so easy to let my feelings in the past guide my future decisions, guide how I relate to someone, guide how I treat someone. But we got to ask ourselves, is this how God treats us? Does God keep a record of wrongs with us? Now some of us may think that He does. Some of us may have taught have been taught that once we sin, God remembers that sins, and he has a he he struggles with wanting to forgive us, and he's kind of on edge, and he looks at us with his nose stuck up in the air, not sure whether or not he wants to forgive us. Well, I'm here to encourage you. The Bible, God's word, is here to encourage you. God promises that He doesn't treat you that way. In fact, Hebrews 10 verse 17 says, "I will never again remember their sins and their lawless acts." This is talking about the new people under the new covenant, the context of this. God would write his laws on our hearts and give us a new spirit, give us a new heart. He'd write, it on, he'd write his laws on our minds. He, he would cause us to want to obey him. And then in that same context it says, I will never again remember their sins and their lawless acts. God does not keep a record of wrong. So when wanting to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ... We need to take on this action of never again remembering the sins of others. Now that's a hard thing to do. Keeping, not, not keeping a record of wrongs of somebody else. That's a hard thing to do. Especially when somebody wronged you for no reason. That's a hard thing to do. It's not like it's just, okay, I know what to do. God wants me to do it. Snap at the finger, I'm done. Okay, I forgive you. All is well. No, it's not like that. I wish it were. I wish it were like that. I think all of us wish it were like that. But it's not. We need to remember that God does not treat us this way. Love, embracing love, love is most important. We need to remember that. Faith expressing itself through love, Galatians. That is what is most important at the end of the day. It's not about religious, legalistic rules. Faith expressing itself through love is what matters at the end of the day. Bearing one another's burdens fulfills the law of Christ. Owe nothing to no one except to love one another because love fulfills the law. God does not treat us as holding a record of wrongs against us. 
Again, Hebrews 10, 17, I will never again remember their sins and their lawless acts. So, Paul's instruction on forgiveness, remember, that these apostles are being inspired by the Holy Spirit. All of God's word is profitable. It's, it's inspired by God. Profitable for doctrine, teaching, reproof, exhortation. Colossians 3, verse 13 says, Accepting one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Do any of you have a complaint against someone right now? You may have something against someone, and you may rightly be justified in it. You know what God wants you to do? Accept that person. Forgive them. Even if you're right. Even if you're right. Forgive them. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, you must also forgive. So when it comes to forgiveness, you need to ask yourself, Okay, how many sins have I committed against God? How, how many wrong? How, how many times have I treated God wrong, carelessly? I just don't. I just have treated Him wrong. And yet, God, while I was yet a sinner, while I was yet His enemy, He died for me. When it comes to forgiving others, we need to remember how much we have been forgiven, and extend that same forgiveness to others. Who live in a world where there's no such forgiveness, the world where there's not much forgiveness at all. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 to 32. All bitterness, anger, wrath, shouting, and slander must be removed from you, along with all malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God has also forgiven you in Christ. So God has forgiven us in Christ. Therefore, we should forgive one another. Accept one another and forgive one another. So you've probably heard this famous quote. Not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Let me say that again. Not forg- choosing to not forgive someone is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison. That's what it says. Not forgiving... Is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. So, when you willfully choose not to forgive someone, you're hurting yourself. It may not seem like that. You may you may feel justified in how you feel. You may feel justified of withholding forgiveness from that person. But you're really hurting yourself. It's like drinking poison. The person who made this quote, I couldn't find the person's name. Um, So, whoever made this quote, right on. I agree with you. Many Christians agree with you. Many people agree with you. Um, But again, not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. You're only hurting yourself. You're killing yourself. But, this is a true quote. When we forgive each other, we need to remember, there's many pros to this. When we willfully choose to forgive each other, it brings us joy. It brings us another victory given to us by God over Satan. Don't you feel so happy when you know that you've overcome a sin? When temptation is presented before you and you say no. Doesn't that give you such a good feeling? Doesn't that give you um, more assurance? Even though you're not saved by what you do, even though you're not saved by you know resisting temptation, you're saved by the blood of Christ, by faith in Jesus Christ. When we choose to forgive the person who has wronged us, and even though we're right in how we feel, it's okay to feel angry. It's okay. It's that's one thing you need. I think we all need to know. It's okay to be angry, as long as we don't let that anger get out of hand. It's how we handle that anger. Are we handling it in a godly way or a worldly, satanic way? I know that's a strong way to put it, but it's okay to be angry um, when it's right, when it's right to be angry. Someone, you know, smacks you upside the face for no reason. It's not like I'm going to say, oh, you know, love you, which, (laughs) which, (laughs) I mean, I want to do that, but, you know, we... It's it's hard not to, you know, get unrighteously angry when if someone were to do that. But 
God can help us. But when we choose to forgive someone, when you make that conscious decision with God's help, remember, you're not alone. It'll bring you joy. At least it brings me joy. Maybe not immediately, because I still have to work through my emotions. But when I look back and say, wow, through, through Christ, I was able to forgive that person. It's a good feeling. And knowing that we've overcome the sin of not forgiving somebody, we've just punched Satan right in the mouth. And it brings us one step closer. Forgiving somebody brings you one step closer to mending your broken heart. Now that may sound ushy-gushy, but I believe that's true. And it releases you, forgiving somebody releases you from the grip of the enemy. So, when we choose to forgive somebody, it does many things. It, it one, it brings us joy. Two, it gives us a, it gives us a victory over Satan. Of course, this is all done by God's grace. Three, it gives us one. It takes us one step closer to mending our broken hearts or a broken heart. Four, it releases us from the ten, from the grip of the enemy. Therefore, let's encourage one another to forgive, even when it's hard. That's why the church is there here for one another. So when you go to church on Sundays, you just sit there in your chair, in your pew, never interact with anybody. I know I've had a habit of that. And just kind of just go through the motions. You're not connected. You don't try to reach out to make relationships with anybody. You don't try to talk with anybody. I understand some of us are introverts. Some of us you know, don't like talking with people. Some of us... Are awkward, socially awkward. I, I can be that way sometimes. I don't know what to say. Weird faces come on my face. That makes sense. Um, I think we can all relate with that. But the church is here for one, supposed to be here for one another, to encourage one another, to forgive each other. If you have something against somebody, ask God to work in your heart. Rely on His strength to help you forgive that person because this is what it's all about. Jesus wants you to forgive that person because He has forgiven you. And when you forgive someone, you show the love of Christ to somebody. And at the end of the day, isn't representing Jesus what it's all about? And hopefully bringing and planting that seed of love in their life. Hopefully they will come to Christ by seeing God work through you. With God's help, we can love and forgive those who have hurt us. God will help us. So I conclude with the following scripture. Daniel 9, chapter 9, verse 9. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against Him. So will you choose to be merciful and forgiving, even though people have rebelled against you? I hope that all of us will strive to do that, to be conformed into the image of our Lord, Jesus Christ. So I pray that this has been a blessing to you, as it has been to me. Seeing what the scriptures have to say about this. And um, I just hope you guys have a blessed day. And share this with people who you believe that have a problem with forgiving. Um, I encourage you to make the relationship right. If you guys have something against each other right now, make it right. God bless you guys. See you later.